welcome to the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with Life Coach Kelly Hanlon McCormick. This is episode number 66. Hey there, everyone. Welcome, welcome. So glad to be hanging out with you this morning. Happy Wednesday. (laughs) How are you doing? What's happening in your world? I so hope that this finds you well, that you're staying safe, that you're staying healthy, and that you're feeling, at least generally speaking, a sense of okayness. You know what I mean? For a few weeks there, where collectively the overwhelming sensation was that the bottom had dropped out and we were all in free fall, uncertain, totally untethered. But as we go on and on and on (laughs) with this, it's the human way to return to our set points, our sense of stability, of happiness even, of security, of okayness, which is kind of an unfancy way of saying neutrality, right? Your own personal status quo. So I hope you're safe. I hope you're healthy. I hope that you're sleeping, that you're moving that you're finding new ways to connect, and that you've returned to your set point, at least part of the time, of okayness. So today we're going to talk about non-productive productivity. What do you think? The idea for this podcast came to me because, number one, we are focusing on time management and productivity this month over in the Fierce Calm Project. And number two, there is no end (laughs) to the memes circulating around about how we should all be decluttering and learning a foreign language and reading Anna Karenina and just as many equal and opposite memes about how those memes are wrong and we should be relaxing and honoring ourselves and allowing all of the Netflix and sleeping in that we can muster. And I just want to start this episode by saying, yes, it's not either or, it's all both, (laughs) right? Quarantine life may be a wonderful time to declutter or conquer a personal or professional project or get back into a hobby or side hustle or learn something new or read more. Sure. I've done most of those things myself. And It's also a beautiful time to rest, to restore, to recuperate. There is no right way to do this. There is no one way to do this. Yeah? I want you to really hear that, that there is no one or no right way to do this time. So non-productive productivity, right? I'm going to share a few passages from books I've been studying lately with you, and we'll go into it a bit, but here's the quick and dirty version, (laughs) all right? Productivity is the doing. It's all of the going, the activity, the busyness, the occupation, the work, the tireless duty of it all. That's productivity. And listen, I personally can be a bit of a productivity junkie. I love to work. I love to challenge myself, to stretch, to reach, to go after big goals and dreams. And I know I'm not alone in that. There are a lot of us who love productivity, right? It's why this productivity and time management module in the Fierce Calm Project has been so popular. But there's also non-productive productivity. And it's simply the being. That's it. There's no achievement, there's no big goal, there's no product, no objective, no tangible result. Non-productive productivity is all about being. So there's a quote from Eddie Hilsom who died at age 29 in Auschwitz. She was a Dutch writer and she authored many confessional type letters and diaries which basically describe her religious awakening, her beliefs and her thoughts on the inner self, that very core of who we are. 
And one of her quotes says, ultimately, we have just one moral duty to reclaim large areas of peace in ourselves, more and more peace, and to reflect it towards others. And the more peace there is in us, the more peace there will also be in our troubled world. This is what I'm talking about today. There is no doing in reclaiming large areas of peace in ourselves. There is being. This is relaxing into what is. This is letting go. This is surrender. This is allowance and acceptance. This is non-productive productivity. Yeah? So this is a kind of ethereal approach. I get it. How do we reclaim large areas of peace in ourselves? What does that look like on a Wednesday morning? What does that look like during quarantine? What does that look like working from home, doing online school with the kids, trying to manage life and the dog and the grocery list, and connecting with friends and family over Zoom while both trying to stay informed and on top of things, and yet not get too close or overdo it with the news, right? I hear ya. And I offer you this. This comes from the book Yamas and Niyamas, which is by Deborah Adele. And the book is an exploration of yoga's ethical practice. And she writes, for this whole week, pretend you are complete. There is no need to expect anything from yourself or to criticize or judge or change anything about you. No need to compete with anyone. No need to be more than you are or less than you are. Note your experience. Notice how much pleasure, kindness, and patience you can allow yourself to have with yourself. So this for me was such a practical and gentle suggestion for how we go about doing something like reclaiming peace. And maybe how we can reclaim pleasure, kindness, and patience. How we can reclaim awareness, understanding, compassion. How we can reclaim attention, intention, presence. And all of this, for me, is a practice in non-productive productivity. You starting to see some themes here? So if we do as Deborah Adele suggests and take a whole week and pretend we are complete, we will likely not have anything to really show for that week. We won't have a project or a decluttered closet or newly painted kitchen cabinets or books that have been reshelved alphabetically or by genre (laughs) or a la high fidelity autobiographically. Are there any Nick Hornby fans out there? Non-productive productivity is all about not having something to show for what you're up to. It's instead about that turn inward. It's about closing down the eyes on the external world and opening up the mind's eye, that third inner eye, to see what's really going on. Take a whole week and pretend you are complete. I'm going to keep repeating that because it's so beautiful. Pretend you are complete. What if we taught our kids that? What if we grew up believing that for ourselves, right? So good. Now, a topic like this just wouldn't be complete without some wisdom from Pema Chodron. So I'm going to read to you from her book, Comfortable with Uncertainty. This is chapter 41, and the chapter is called Be Where You Are. This chapter felt extremely fitting for this topic of nonproductive productivity, where we're cultivating a sense of being over doing. All right, so Pema says, you can cultivate the four limitless qualities of love, compassion, joy, and equanimity by learning to relax where you are. There's no problem with being where you are right now. Even if you feel loving kindness for only one sentient being, that is a good place to start. Simple acknowledging, respecting, and appreciating the warmth 
is a way to encourage its growth. We can be where we are and at the same time leave wide open the possibility of being able to expand far beyond where we are now in the course of our lifetime. Expansion never happens through greediness or pushing or striving. It happens through some combination of learning to relax where you already are and at the same time, keeping the possibility open that your capacity, my capacity, the capacity of all beings is limitless. As we continue to relax where we are, our opening expands. This is the potential of a human being. This is the gift of a human birth. When we say, may I have happiness, or may I be free of suffering, or may any individual have happiness and be free of suffering, we are saying that it is the potential of a human being to expand our capacity for opening and caring limitlessly. It starts out with feeling love or compassion for one being. It can expand to include more and more beings until it reaches the full human capacity for connecting with love and compassion, which is limitless, free-flowing warmth. Dynamic, alive, connected energy with no reference point. This is our human potential to connect with the true state of affairs. It begins with being where we are. Is that not fantastic? Pema Chodron is always just the thing, just the ticket. So a few thoughts from that reading, just to reiterate. There's no problem with being where you are right now. What? (laughs) What? There's no problem with being where you are right now. Let that sink in for a moment. Let that sink in in this moment. Consider coronavirus. Consider quarantine. Consider what's happening for you in your life in this moment. There's no problem with being where you are right now. Just sinking into that, leaning into that truth is pretty powerful. That's 10 short words and a whole lot of meaning, which basically that's Pema Chodron for you. Are you all familiar with Pema Chodron? She's so wonderful. She's a Tibetan Buddhist nun She's, well, Google her. (laughs) Her book, When Things Fall Apart, is particularly timely right now, but all of her stuff is the best stuff. All right, another part. How about expansion never happens through greediness or pushing or striving? That's all of the doing, right? All of the going and achieving. Can you see it? The greediness is what we think we need, that enoughness. It's never enough. The pushing forward and forward and forward. The striving for more. Expansion never happens through greediness or pushing or striving. Also, she said, this is our human potential to connect with the true state of affairs. It begins with being where we are. My clients will tell you that I help them to create a roadmap for where they want to go, right? We work together on the how to work towards their dreams, their goals, their wants in life. Yes, of course. But in order to create that roadmap, to create any map ever, we need to know where we're starting. We need to know our current whereabouts. It always begins with being where we are. So before we close for today, I told you at the top of this episode that the idea for this episode came to me because we're focusing on time and productivity over in the Fierce Calm Project. And also because there's an overwhelming amount of (laughs) suggestions slash pressure on the social media channels and the news and the internet about how we should all be doing and conquering and winning this quarantine. This sense of effort, of more, of doing. And I admit that the title, Non-Productive Productivity, (laughs) it had a kind of, wait, what? Ring to it that felt kind of fun. But 
More importantly than a catchy podcast episode title is the truth of what I'm trying to convey, what I'm wanting to convey in this time with you today, which is there is not another thing that you need to read or achieve or learn or become. There is nothing else out there that you need to master. The idea of non-productive productivity is that we can reclaim large areas of peace in ourselves, that we can pretend that we are whole and complete, if only for a week, that we can relax where we are, and that that, the quote-unquote productivity of peace, of completeness, of relaxation, is exactly the non-productivity that we all need. Now, sure, but really, always. So I hope this is the permission slip you need to settle down, to ground, to just let it all go. And I want to share one more amazing resource with you today. Because pretty much all of us are new to the art of relaxation, (laughs) true relaxation, if you'd like some support, I highly recommend a sound meditation. This is something I've been practicing with and returning to over and over and over again these past few weeks. I'm finding myself really drawn to this as a way to center and relax. So a sound meditation, think of it like a guided meditation, but with sound instead of words. So instead of having someone talk you through the meditative process, this is a meditation you practice with sound. So my favorite resource for this is Embodied Sounds. You can find him. His name is Joshua Miller over at www.embodiedsounds.com. And you can access some of his recordings and offerings for free at his website, which is awesome. They're great as background music for yoga or for reading or for working. Um, If you want to kind of invoke some of that feeling, some of that relaxation into your day. But they're also really wonderful as a kind of sound bath where you either just sit or lie down and just let the sound wash over you. It feels like a really anchoring treat. And that's what I've been needing plenty these days. So check it out. Maybe that will help you and speak to you as well. EmbodiedSounds.com. Okay, that's it for today. I will see you again, same time, same place next week. Next week, we're going to talk about (laughs) the rock star and the manager. This is one of my favorite coaching tools. It's something that I use with pretty much all of my clients at some point or another. And it's something I remind myself of and use myself pretty often. It's a fun technique, it's kind of lighthearted, but it's also really helpful. So we will talk about rock stars and we will talk about managers next week. So until then, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, all right? I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with Kelly McCormick. If you enjoy the work we're doing here and want to get even more out of this, I invite you to check out the Fierce Calm Project. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all of this work, apply it to your life, and create real, lasting transformation. Find out more and get enrolled by going to www.kellyhanlonmccormick.com slash fierce calm project we'd love to have you join us music for the podcast is by jesse blake the song is ritual and you can find out more about him at www.jesseblakemusic.com